जय गोपी जन जय गिरे वरधारी जय गिरे वरधारी गोपी जन जय गिरिवर धारे जय गोपी जन वल्लभ जय गिरिवर धारे जय गिरिवर जय यशोदनंदन जय ब्रजजन रंजन जय ब्रजजन रंजन जय यशोदनंदन जय ब्रजजन रंजन जय ब्रजजन रंजन जय ब्रजजन रंजन यमुना तीर वनचारी जय कुंज बिहारी जय यमुना तीरा बन चारे जय कुंज बिहारी जय यमुना तीरा बन चारे जय कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज जय राध माधव जय कुंज जय राध माधव जय कुंज हरी
जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्रज गच्छार्य अष्टोदरक्ष श्रीमदजवाइन ग्रीस श्रील भय चरणारविंद भक्ति वेदांत गोस्वामी महाराज शिल प्रभुपाद की इस्कॉन बिबड़ संस्थापक आचार्य शिल प्रभुपाद की जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्रज गच्छार्य अष्टोदरक्ष श्रीमदजवाइन ग्रीस श्रील भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर प्रभुपाद की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की नामाचार्य शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास गौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड श्री गिरिगोवर्धन की ब्रज भूमि श्री वृंदावन धाम की पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की गंगा माई जमुना माई की भक्ति देवी तुलसी महारानी की कलिग पावन हरि नाम संकीर्तन की हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की शील प्रभुपा ट्रांसल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की ग्रंथराज श्रीमद्भागवतम महापुराण की गीता जयंती महामहोत्सव की निताय गौर प्रेमानंदे ऑल ग्लोरिस टू असम्बल डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस टू असम्बल डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस टू असम्बल डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरिस टू श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरांग ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञान तिमिरंध से ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुरून मिलत तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिदस्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा सो टुडे वी कवर द लास्ट सेक्शन ऑफ द भगवत गीता एज पार्ट ऑफ आवर फोर लेक्चर सीरीज on the occasion of geeta jayanti yesterday i completed till chapter number 12 and from chapter 13 which is the nature the enjoyer and consciousness we will continue from today kaviraj goswami explains in chaitanya charitamrita ehi rupe achandale kirtan sanchare नाम प्रेम माला गोंथी गोरेला संसारे लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभु केम टू डिलीवर द एंटायर यूनिवर्स ऑल द कंडीशन सोल्स फ्रॉम द टेंडेंसी टूवर्ड सिंपल लाइफ ही डिड दैट बाय कार लैंडिंग ऑल द सोल्स विथ द फ्लावर्स ऑफ प्योर लव Prema, which were all tied together 
with the string of the holy name and lord chaitanya mahaprabhu revealed the higher nature Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the and he was demonstrating this consciousness of being a servant and therefore would be constant service there should be a constant prayer to be engaged in service and in that aspiration to serve constantly the soul experiences the greatest ecstasy pulaka ashru kampa sweda tahate bhushan and these were the various ornaments which adorned lord chaitanya mahaprabhu's form and here in this chapter arjuna begins by asking six questions about what is prakriti what is purusha kshetram kshetragyam gyanam gyayam so these are the different questions which arjuna asks and krishna replies to arjuna in this 13th chapter explaining all of these concepts very clearly so in the 12th chapter concluding section there is a description of more than 35 qualities of a pure devotee beginning from adveshta sarvabhutana maitra karuna evacha and so one of the biggest challenges for practitioners of religion is to find exemplary practitioners because the philosophy is there but if someone is not practicing the philosophy appropriately and that does not reflect in their behavior and nature then rather than increasing faith it many times affects the faith of those who are practicing so when a person is neither following any religion nor has any virtues then there are anti social elements in society if someone is not practicing any religion professes to be an atheist but some of these people also have very good qualities they are very respectful soft spoken they are very well behaved 
so they have high degree of virtue they have high degree of virtue but low faith in any kind of religious principle so they are well behaved atheists if someone has high degree of faith in religion and he claims publicly also to be practitioner of a spiritual path but he is low on virtues he is low on behavior then they are known as bad religionists they are misrepresenting the spiritual tradition and people develop doubts when they come across such practitioners and so when someone has high faith in spiritual path and also exemplary in practicing the process then they are actually exemplary high degree of virtue high degree of spiritual faith so this is basically the essence of what krishna described that the devotional service is a very potent path by which the heart can be transformed and it can activate and energize the virtues within and subordinate and eliminate vices sushila sahishnu shanta badanya gambhir madhur vachan madhur cheshta mahadhir shri haridas pandit who is the leader of the govind dev temple in vrindavan his character his qualities are described sushila very well behaved sahishnu tolerant shanta very quiet and subdued vadanya compassionate gambhir he is very grave madhur vachan very sweet in his speech madhur cheshta excellent in his dealings mahadhir and he is very very sober sabar samman karta koren sabar he kautilya matsarya himsa na jane tar chit he is respectful towards all always benefiting others free from fault finding tendency free from envy and in this way haridas pandit is glorified as a person with exemplary qualities and therefore shri rup goswami empowered him to take charge of the seva of shishi radha govind dev and having described the perfection of devotional qualities now krishna is entering into the 13th chapter and beginning the analysis that if the perfection of qualities in a soul as described in the 13th to the 20th verse of the 12th chapter based on how a person practices devotional service as described in 12.8 mayeva mana adhatsva may buddhim niveshaya nivasishyasi mayeva at urdham na samshaya by being completely absorbed in the practice of remembering the lord and if he cannot be completely absorbed then at least atachittam samadhatum na saknoji mai sthiram abhyas yoge na tato he practices the process of bhakti he follows a certain sadhana so these are the perfect qualities which a person generates so the question arises from where does this imperfection come if the soul is originally pure if the soul is filled with all these divine qualities 
if the soul has all of these reflections of the supreme lord as part of his original nature from where does the degradation begin so the 13th chapter brings us into that conception that how the soul the jiva the prakriti and the ishwar or the purusha and the jiva being an insignificant part and parcel purusha and the supreme lord is actually the original purusha the jiva has only the kshetra or the domain of enjoyment of this body and therefore he is kshetragya in a limited way whereas the supreme lord is aware of all the entire creation so therefore gyaya means what is to be known gyana is how it is to be known kshetragya is who is that who knows kshetra is what is it that is known purusha is who is the conscious being and prakriti means what is the insentient matter so these are the points which are being described with respect to these six qualities six questions asked by arjuna so ultimately all these six questions are concerning the ishvara jiva and prakriti and depending on the interaction certain kind of karma manifests under the influence of kala so again one may feel that the subject matter is repetitive somebody ashila prabhupad repeatedly in your purports you keep writing krishna is the supreme personality of godhead material world is a place of suffering human life is not meant for sense gratification why do you repeat it so many times prabhupad said still you don't understand <laughs> that means the tendency to enjoy is so deep rooted it requires repeated reminders and so the whole process of trying to be the enjoyer of this material world is something which the soul is struggling to overcome so the whole idea of spiritual life spiritual education is to help the soul realize help the jiva understand that i am not the bhokta of prakriti i am a sevak of ishwar and all my interactions with prakriti have to be in the seva of ishwar so this transformation has to happen and that's the only difference between arjuna and duryodhana competence wise both were quite competent both were kshatriya warriors mahabharat does not find any fault in duryodhana's administration capabilities ramayan does not spend more than one chapter describing dhritarashtra's administration abilities the whole focus of mahabharat and ramayan is not the quality of administration but the character of the administrator and if you can imagine how popular these two serials still are even when it was shown during pandemic it broke all records with respect to viewership which means that there is a certain important point to be noted that as long as the character 
is not transformed from being an enjoyer, proprietor, controller to be that of a servant and a trustee, there will always be some trouble. So the word Duryodhan basically means one who is always fighting for the wrong cause. Duryodhan. And what is the cause Duryodhan is always fighting for? He is always fighting to protect and preserve his false ego. Duryodhana is obsessed with one thing. I am the best. And as soon as he sees someone is threatening that concept that I am the best, he becomes insecure. So therefore he is always fighting. Duryodhan. Fighting for the wrong cause. To the extent that in summer season, Duryodhan would not allow anyone to carry an umbrella above him. Because Duryodhan's conception was, nobody can be higher than me, above me, including umbrella. Somebody was asking me and challenging me in a program. That in your lectures, you always criticize Duryodhan. Always glorify Arjuna. You are biased. Duryodhan also had good qualities. He was administering well. He was taking care of his kingdom. There was no poverty, no unemployment. By today's standard, he was a very good politician. He was a very good administrator. Don't always be negative. Don't criticize. I said, okay, anyone in your family you have ever named Duryodhan? He said, no. Anybody else's family you know? Are you willing to keep? For future generation, at least your grandson, you want to keep? Duryodhan, name? He says, no, no, no. I said, why? He said, Are kus to garbar tha <laughs> That means everybody understands intuitively that whether they have studied Gita or not, nobody minds keeping somebody's name Arjun. It's not that the prerequisite for keeping somebody's name Arjun is they have to be Bhakti Shastri. <laughs> so many people keep their son's name or grandson's name Arjun. So they know. Why? The character. That is a most important parameter. And so the process of transforming the consciousness from being a proprietor and enjoyer to be a servant because the Gita began with Dharma Kshetri ends with Dhruva Netir Matir Mama Mama Dharma my Sanatan Dharma is as a Sevak of the Ishwar and therefore the process of transformation is through transmission of knowledge. Through that transmission of knowledge, the transformation happens. And so, the 20 points describing knowledge are given in the 13th chapter. Whatever is in these 20 items, that is knowledge. Whatever is outside of this is not knowledge, is ignorance. Amanitvam adam bhitvam ohimsa kshantirarjavam acharya upashamam shaucham sthairyam atma vinigraha. So, interestingly, the process of knowledge begins with humility. Amanitvam. No humility, no acquisition of knowledge. Not possible. Amanitva means one is in a humble position. So the word humility comes from the Latin word humus, which means soil. So that soil is where the seed of bhakti can be sown. Bhakti lata bija. 
सो ह्यूमिलिटी और अमानित्वम इज अ वेरी क्रूशियल प्रिंसिपल ओनली वेन द हार्ट इज हम्बल देन द नॉलेज कैन एक्चुअली बी स्टोर्ड only then the knowledge will have its effect and that's the reason why you know when we come to the process of krishna consciousness one of the first principles is we accept shelter of gurus and having accepted shelter of gurus one gets initiated and then after initiation one begins the process of vishrambhena gurur seva so at the time of initiation the name is changed and the name is changed and the last word is given as das and what does das mean servant right servant means one who is filled with humility and pridelessness das basically indicates we are accepting a certain situation where we will be acquiring and gaining knowledge and applying that knowledge in our lives that's the idea of becoming a das soshila prabhupad he was in a initiation ceremony and then different devotees were discussing my name is better than your name i got so and so name disconnected to brindavan your name is paramatma das it is very generic not so intimate so prabhupad he heard this and he said the most important part of the name is das to be a servant which means taking the humble position so our hamsadut prabhu he was from germany and he had a german name and his german name was hans carry and everybody used to make fun of him in america that it was a different name different sounding name you know so when prabhupad gave him diksha prabhupad gave him the name hamsadoot adhikari so he said prabhupad what is this what is the meaning of this prabhupad said in your old name hamsa hans you add duta and in your second name carry you add adhi so it becomes hamsa dut adhi carry so hans carry has become like this so he said are even after initiation name did not change so prabhupad what is the meaning of this name he said prabhupad said you read the bhagavatam you will find out so he started reading and then after some time he couldn't find the meaning which he was looking for and then prabhupad was sitting in a initiation ceremony and after the ceremony prabhupad was talking to different devotees and he was saying brahmanand means this so and so is this the meaning of this name is this so hamsadut prabhu thought this is a good time to ask he came to prabhupad and said shila prabhupad who is hamsadut prabhupad said you <laughs> and then prabhupad said the most important part of the name is das servant so therefore the service attitude is most important and imbued with that service attitude lakshmana served shri ram sarva priya karas tasya ramasya pi sharirata lakshmana lakshmi sampanna bahir prana iva par lakshman considered ram to be his external life heir and he considered the opportunity to serve lord ram to be 
his greatest wealth. So Lakshman literally means one who is Lakshmi Sampanna. One who is filled with the opulence and the wealth of Seva Rupi Lakshmi. So therefore, Amanitvam and Adambitvam is the foundation for growing and gaining knowledge, which is humility and pridelessness. And then all the different points of knowledge, the Lord explains. And some of these are qualities. Some of these are activities which need to be done. But there is only one process which Krishna describes in this entire 20 points. Acharya upasamam shaucham, accepting Acharya, being pure. Sthairyam Atma Vinigra, controlling the mind and senses. Indriyarteshu Vairagyam Anahankare, which are becoming free from ahankar, being detached from the sense gratification. Janmamrtu Jaravadi Dukkha Doshanudarshanam, to see the fault in birth, old age, disease, and death. Asakthir Anabhishwanga Putradara Grahadishu. Nityam Jasamajitatta Mishta Nishto Patishu. And then understanding what is favorable, what is not favorable, accepting and rejecting. So various conditions for gaining knowledge, qualities, all these things are described. But now, in the entire 20 points, only one point is explaining the process. Mai cha ananya yogena bhaktir avyabhicharini In the entire 20 points, only one process is described. Ananya yogena bhaktir avyabhicharini. So, Ananya avyabhicharini bhakti yoga. So, by any degree of Sanskrit interpretation, you can't speculate in a different way with these words. Ananya avyabhicharini bhakti yoga. Through that, Krishna says, one attains to me. In the 20 points of knowledge is not bringing in any of the other yoga processes, but specifically quotes this. And this is a subject matter of a lot of wonderful analysis by the Acharyas showing the relationship between Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, Nishkam Karma Yoga with Bhakti Yoga and how Bhakti Yoga is foundational. And the touch of Bhakti is so crucial for experiencing this. So then he asks, you know, okay, in this particular context, in the modern world, what is knowledge? Knowledge consists of virtue, capacity to control the inner world and skill is the capacity to control the outer world. So knowledge is supposed to endow skill and virtue. In the modern context, in secular education, people's expectation from the education system is primarily to get skill which is the capacity to control the outer world. And there is no requirement of gaining virtue, the capacity to control the inner world. Right? And therefore, like even when I was studying in college, there was one professor who, while you know, writing on the board, would get stuck. And right in the middle of the class, he would take out a cigarette. And the student sitting in front bench would give the match. Guru Seva. <laughs> and everybody was fine with that because there was no connection between behavior or 
you know, virtue or this or that. Ultimately, you need the skill. With that skill, whatever you can do, do it. So, Vedic knowledge is supposed to endow both skill and virtue. The capacity to control both the outer and the inner worlds. And therefore, the purpose of knowledge is first, doing, second, becoming, and third, being. Being. That means you realize who you are. And since we are trapped within this world, why we are studying nature in this particular chapter? Arjuna is asking about nature because having realized that I am trapped in the fifth, you know, within this material world, if I'm a prisoner, then I must know how to get out of the prison. I must know how is the prison designed. So therefore the 13th, 14th, 15th and the 16th chapter very much focus on the details of how the jiva is getting trapped within prakriti. What is the process of getting trapped? Because to escape you must understand the rules of the prison. You must understand the design of the prison. You must understand why I landed in the prison in the first place. And then what it takes to get out of the prison. And therefore, in the whole idea of purpose of knowledge, study anything that interests us and study that transforms or liberates us. And therefore, this process of the understanding of how the nature traps us is the beginning of escaping from this material world. Mlecha jati mlecha sevi kori mlecha karma Go Brahmana Drohe Sange Amara Sangam. Rup and Sanatan, they approach Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They approach him in the mood of being a conditioned soul trapped in the material world. They say, there are three ways in which a person gets trapped because of his specific birth because of his occupation and because of his association. And so, we beg at your lotus feet that we want to take shelter of the Supreme Lord and we want you to deliver us. Because we are drowning in this mud of material existence. Mora karma mora hate golae bandhiya ko visha ya vishta garthe diache filaya. With our own choices, we have tied a noose around our neck. Ko visha ya vishta garthe. In this deep mud of material existence, we are drowning. My dear Lord, we may be unqualified. You are like the moon. We may be like the dwarf. But the moonshine can always touch the dwarf. Your causeless mercy can deliver us. So, caught within and trapped within this material world, the jiva's realization has to be that I am trapped. I am trying to be the controller and enjoyer of prakriti, but I am simply a puppet. 
I'm simply being made to dance by the influence of material nature. That realization has to be prominent. So, like um, I remember I was traveling on a flight with uh, two of my other friends and we were going from Venice to London and when I came to the airport it was announced that flight is cancelled, postponed for the next day. Next day again we went in the morning again just before we boarded the flight we had already checked in our luggage and everything just before boarding the flight last minute they cancelled and they said you go and pick up your luggage and go and stand in the queue for fresh ticket and first so many hundred people whoever lands up there will get the tickets. First come, first serve. So then I told my two friends, you go and pick up the luggage. I will go and stand in queue because others will not get this idea. Because these ideas are made in India. <laughs> so all the others with whole families, they were going to pick up the luggage. Everybody was coming together, whereas we split. They went and picked the luggage. I was right there, first person to stand at the counter. And I was feeling extremely proud of my creativity. <laughs> and then gradually everybody came with their luggage and they started standing behind 100, 150 people. I kept turning back and feeling proud of how I outsmarted. And then when the counter opened, I got the first ticket. And I went there perfectly satisfied with my you know, creativity. When we went to get the boarding pass after one hour at the counter, at you know, boarding gate, they were giving the boarding pass. The lady picked up the ticket and looked at the ticket and said, I'm sorry, sir, you have been issued tomorrow's ticket. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. I was the first one in the counter. It cannot be tomorrow's ticket because I was standing right in front. I was the first to get. You may have been first to get, but I think the counter person made a mistake. I said, it's not possible. I was the first. Said, Whatever it is, you go and clarify there. So I got thrown out of there. So I was already like in denial. How can this happen? The only thing going in my mind, was I was the first to stand there. I was the first to stand there. Then finally, when I went to the counter, to the lady who actually issued me the ticket, she looked at the ticket and said, oh, I had a night shift, you know. I didn't sleep properly. While typing, I made a mistake. Instead of today, I put for tomorrow. I said, now change it. Well, I'm sorry. I have issued all the tickets for the flight. If three people cancel, then you have a chance. I said, how can you do this? And I started, you know being a little aggressive, started questioning loudly. What should I do now? So she pointed to my bead bag. <laughs> and she said, you're a monk, pray to him. So she preached to me. So I went back and sat and chanted some really good japa. And gratefully, three or four people did not turn up. We could board the flight. But you may make all your plans this way, that way, and you'll be convinced that, yes, I've used my intelligence to the best of my ability. Something will go wrong. Things will not work out. So in my 30 years of experience serving in ISKCON, because I was in the ashram, I've served with various categories of people from IITians to all kinds of, you know, other educated people, down to people in the labor class who come from very simple backgrounds, uneducated backgrounds. And one fascinating thing I've seen, that the response to calamity or problem from those who are coming from very simple backgrounds is they are more accepting and they are able to deal with it with more fortitude 
because they have dealt with many more failures and challenges in life and whereas the intelligent educated and one who has cracked exam after exam using his intellect starts thinking that just like i crack these exams i can crack life's exam also but life will throw up surprise quiz and usually most of the exams are out of syllabus <laughs> so unless one has experience of the knowledge of the gita where krishna is very clearly explaining that the way the prakriti will operate is not that prakriti will take your permission may i do this no prakriti will impose itself and you will have to deal with it purusha prakriti stho hi bhungte prakritir jan gunan karanam guna sangosya sad asat yoni janmasu and therefore the relationship between the jiva and the prakriti has been for time immemorial the jiva wanting to enjoy the prakriti and therefore to separate the two is the big challenge and then krishna explains about the gyana chakshu the vision of knowledge that every entity is a combination of prakriti and purusha and the true seer's vision samam sarveshu bhuteshu tishthantam parameshwaram vinashyatsyu avinashyantam yah pashyate sapashyate that the supreme lord is situated within the heart upadrishta anumanta bharta bhokta maheshwara so having described what is prakriti he also describes who is the kshetragya the kshetragya is the supreme lord within as parmatma and the jiva knows the limited kshetra of the body the parmatma knows what is going on in all the bodies so in this way this chapter focuses on arjuna's six questions kshetra kshetragya gyana geya prakriti purusha and krishna actually explains all of these concepts in detail to arjuna so the question arises when is gyana unfavorable to bhakti when the constitution of the soul is interpreted in a way that there is oneness which denies the eternal wealth of bhakti when one goes in this direction the heart becomes hard and one considers all the emotions to be illusion and thus gyan is favorable to bhakti when it is concerned with glorifying the lord the lord's qualities and the jiva's eternal position of service with the lord aho aho bhir nakaler vidhuyate sudha sudhara madhuram pade pade dine dine chandana chandra shitalam yasho yasho da tana yasya giyate in this intense age of kali that which offers cooling feature to the heart is the glories of lord krishna being described in the shrimad bhagavatam and all the vedic literatures sudha sudhara madhuram pade pade which is sweet which is ecstatic and transformational for the heart and therefore yasho yashoda tanayasya giyate the supreme lord is yashoda nandan and his glories actually create transformation in the heart 
and therefore Srila Prabhupada spent quality time writing the Srimad Bhagavatam purports. And yesterday I was describing in the other temple. Very rarely we have come across publishing houses which publish their hard copies and along with that they give all of their content online for free. And still the hard copies sell. So in Gita, all of you, in the in marathon, you are going out and selling the Bhagavad Gita. But Bhagavad Gita is available. Vedabase.io If you go on Vedabase, www.vedabase.io The first book you will see is Gita. You click the Gita. From introduction till last verse, everything is there. All the purports are there. But even then, I can say with guarantee that today, on December 4th, all over the world, ISKCON devotees will sell more than 100,000 Gitas. Even if they tell people, Veda base, it's there online. Well, and I was up to you, but we want the Gita. Right? So, so far, ISKCON has distributed 56 crore Bhagavad Gitas and books connected to that. So therefore, Prabhupada spent the night translating. So Prabhupada had a disciple in Mumbai called Haridas Prabhu. He used to be a pickpocket before. And he used to be active at night. So he joined Prabhupada and then he came to Prabhupada one night, one o'clock in the morning. So, Srila Prabhupada, in Hare Krishna land, only two people are awake. You and me. <laughs> you because you are translating the books. Me because I have a previous conditioning. Everybody is sleeping. You are translating Bhagavatam. I am totally illiterate. How will I be engaged? Prabhupada said, yes, there is a way to engage you. And Prabhupada said, there are lots of dogs who keep barking at night. And the barking of the dog sound enters into the dictaphone when I am translating. And when the dog's barking sound enters the dictaphone, next day, the person who is transcribing, he misses on some of the crucial words. Because it has been covered with the barking sound. Shri Bhagavan Uvaj. Woo, 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 woo. So, so next two, three words is covered. So Prabhupada said, you take a stick and keep chasing the dogs all night. So he did that. So he, his realization was Prabhupada had the capacity to engage someone from the street to someone who was a PhD. He could engage everybody appropriately. And so Srila Prabhupada gave tremendous emphasis on the publication and distribution of his books. Because only in these books Purusha, Prakriti, Jiva, all these descriptions are very clearly explained and how to get out. So they made a case against ISKCON way back in 1974-75 New York calling ISKCON a cult. So the president of New York came to Prabhupada and said we have to engage a lawyer to fight the case. Prabhupada said no need for lawyer. You fight. He says, but how can I fight? Prabhupada said take my books. Take my Srimad Bhagavatam to the court. When your turn comes to present, present the first canto, first chapter, first shloka on the first day of the case. On the second day of the case, speak from the second shloka. Third day of the case, speak from the third shloka. Convert the court case into Bhagavatam class. <laughs> After seven days of presenting heavy philosophy, from the books. The judge also became a little bewildered. 
the judge asked how much more evidence you have <laughs> the devotee said i only finished 7 there are total 18000 <laughs> the judge got bewildered he called one of his friends who was a harvard divinity professor and said hey what do you think about this hari krishna and the books and everything he says oh i have read swami prabhupad's books bhakti vedanta purports they are very bona fide this is not a cult this is based on ancient tradition from india It's perfectly authentic not a cult the judge got what he wanted the support and the evidence and he next day came and announced the hare krishna is not a cult it is a bona fide religion and it was published and printed in the newspaper also so therefore some devotee book distributors as part of the library party went and distributed the entire bhagavatam set in that college so the professor read it he had understood and that influenced so today you go and distribute the book to someone its effect will manifest somewhere else without even your knowing it so now having described how the jiva gets trapped within prakriti the question arises what is this prakriti all about so then the 14th chapter describes the prakriti consists of three modes of nature satvagun rajogun and tamogun mode of goodness is things we can change mode of passion things that matter to us and mode of ignorance things that don't matter and so krishna explains the details of the modes in the 14th chapter tatr satvam nirmalatvat prakashakam anamayam sukha sangena badnati gyana sanghena chanagha o anagha o sinless arjun you can understand about this knowledge of the modes because you are sinless because you are sinless the mode of goodness can manifest and you can understand with clarity and therefore he explains the mode of passion is seen in those who are filled with obsessive greed desire to enjoy and control and compete and so lobha prabhat ारंभ कर्मण अशम स्पृह रजंते जायते विवृद्धे भरतर्षभ लोभ इज ग्रीड प्रवृत्तिरारंभ कर्मण इंसेसेंट डिजायर टू एंजॉय टू वर्क टू कंपीट टू आउट डू रजसी effect of mode of passion so prabhupada explains in the purport that modern day kaliyuga is considered to be advanced by the standard of mode of passion if you are not in mode of passion people will think you are irrelevant do you exist you are not competing what are you doing huh? one of our friends showed a business card to somebody and his name was written and below the name was written his educational qualification phd bf he said what is that he said phd but fail <laughs> said what is this he said my father wanted me to be phd but when i entered i realized after 3 years that here it is not there so i dropped out and prabhupad says in bengali kapale naiko ghi ठकठकाले हो इफ घी इज नॉट रिटर्न हियर इफ यू सिंपली टेक एन एम टी पॉट एंड चम्मच स्पून एंड कीप डूइंग ठक 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 घी विल नॉट मैनिफेस्ट सो अंडर सोशल प्रेजर वी मेक मेनी डिसीजन बिकॉज वी हैव टू शो वी आर समथिंग 
So he said, I dropped out of PhD. Then they were telling me you should go and attend conferences. So I said, if I don't have PhD, or what will people say? So I wrote my degree, PhD, added BF to be honest. And most people think that BF is a degree beyond PhD. <laughs> you are the first person who is going so deep into questioning. So this is typical Kaliuga Rajogun. What I am and what I do is not important. How I am perceived, how to show off that I am better and more powerful than what I am. There is a five-star hotel in Mumbai called Hotel President. One roti will cost 150 rupees. The rate will be paid. Right outside Hotel President, one guy was selling samosa in a hand cart, thela. And he named it Hotel Vice President. <laughs> if you can't afford the president, come to Vice President. <laughs> so, Rajasi etani jayante vivruddhe. When we come to the process of Krishna consciousness, the idea is to put some break on the mode of passion and gradually transform. Tada rajas tamo bhava kama lobhada yaschai cheta eter anavidam sthitam sattve prasidati Come to the process of sattva. That's the idea. And then he explains what is tamoguna. Aprakasho apravrtischa pramado moha evacha tamasyetani jayante Vivridhe kurunandana. Aprakasho apravrti pramado. One is one who thinks what is good to be bad and what is bad to be good. Accepts opposite. Right? Gets totally bewildered. Is indolent, lazy, cannot be provoked into any action. No kind of Good counsel will impact him. It's height of Tamoguna. And in this way, this chapter gives details of how Sattvaguna is illuminating, Rajoguna is binding, and Tamoguna, it absorbs you and drowns you in delusion and total misery and so the effect of the conditioning of the modes is described that the short term effect of the mode of goodness is clarity the short term effect of the mode of passion is craving the short term effect of the mode of ignorance is confusion short term medium term effect of mode of goodness is purification. Medium term effect of the mode of passion is distress. And medium term effect of the mode of ignorance is foolishness. But the most important is the long term. The long term impact of a lifestyle based on the mode of goodness is elevation. Elevation in one's consciousness. The long-term impact of the mode of passion is to be totally absorbed in misery. And the long-term effect of ignorance is degradation. So we have to focus whether we want to be degraded or miserable or elevated. And therefore, the mode of goodness must be chosen. And so, the Chaitanya Charitamrita describes that through the association of great souls, transformation of the heart happens. 
आमानिस्तारिते तोमार इहा आगमन परमो दयालु तुमी पोतिता पावन रामानंद राय सेस टू लॉर्ड चेतन्य महाप्रभु यू हैव अपीयर्ड हियर टू गिव योर एसोसिएशन एंड डिलीवर मी वेद निष्ठा मध्य और धेक वेद मुखे माने वेद निषिद्ध पाप कोरे धर्म नहीं गोने those who know what is to be done what is not to be done still are unable to follow it they are known as patita patita means intuitively i know this should not be done but still unable to control why because of weakness of heart i was in a program doing kirtan there was somebody sitting right in front and i was telling encouraging everybody clap your hands this guy was not clapping only he was sitting there like that i said clap he says no 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 enthusiasm to clap after the lecture prasad was over after prasad i saw him in one corner he had tobacco in his hand and he was clapping loudly <laughs> i caught him and said hey during kirtan no sound was coming now when you put tobacco clapping very loudly yeah hey, prabhu this is not tobacco this is sanjeevni booty this <laughs> sanjeevni who said are my grandfather used to teach me ramayana in between he would take this when i asked him what is this he said this is what hanuman ji brought and by smelling this lakshman got energized <laughs> so there is sense gratification and there is philosophical purport also सो वेद निषिद्ध पाप कोरे धर्म नहीं गणे सो ओनली इन दैट सत्संग वन गेट्स द स्ट्रेंथ टू से नो टू द पुशिंग ऑफ द सेंसेस अदरवाइज इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल इट्स ऑलमोस्ट इम्पॉसिबल एंड सो only by that satsang and the grace of the sadhu sang that transformation is possible the end of this chapter krishna describes that an arjuna asks what are the symptoms of one who has transcended the modes so krishna says the intelligent self observant he sees his emotions and desires as different from himself and his devotional dedication means he has a strong desire for something higher that means we can only transcend the modes with determination what is the meaning of determination determination is to put intention above your emotion when you prioritize your intention over your emotion that is known as determination jadi se maha prabhu na pai kripa dhan kevaraj ki badeh sab akaran pratapadra maharaj is determined he says i may give up my life but i have to get lord chaitanya's grace bhattacharye कहे दे बन कर विषाद तोमारे ऊपर प्रभुर संपूर्ण प्रसाद माय डियर किंग डू नॉट बी बेविल्डर्ड ओ प्रताप रुद्र महाराज बी रेस्ट एश्योर्ड वेरी सून द लॉर्ड विल शो हिज मर्सी टू यू बिकॉज ऑफ योर डिटर्मिनेशन सततम कीर्तयन तो माम यतंत दृढ़ सो वन नीड्स दृढ़ प्रता डिटर्मिनेशन ओनली विथ दैट डिटर्मिनेशन वन कैन प्रोग्रेस वाई द टेम्पल्स आर क्रिएटेड द टेम्पल्स आर क्रिएटेड सो दैट यू कैन कम एंड हैव दर्शन ऑफ द डीटीज 
what's the effect of having darshan of the deities not that you see the deities that's one part but the most important part of seeing the deities is the deities see you the deities glance upon you chandrika vishada smairai sa aruna apanga vikshitaihi svakarthanam ivaraja sat Brahmaji says when you take darshan of the deities, the deities glance upon you, two effects happen. By the deities glance upon you, the desire to serve the Lord arises within the devotee's heart. And the devotee develops desire to serve and he starts serving through the process of serving. Some obstacles will come. When the obstacles come, the devotee gets doubts. Should I continue? How will I continue? Why I am going through this difficult condition? Then the devotee looks upon the Lord's smile. The Lord's smile is encouraging and telling the devotee, continue your process. I am with you. So the Lord's glance creates desire within the devotee creates devotional desire within the devotee's heart and the Lord's smile reassures the devotee. You continue practicing the process. In due course of time, you will attain perfection. Therefore, both of these are very important and that's why we come to the temple and have darshan of the deities. And I believe all of you are very soon going to Establish a new temple. Yes? Narahari Prabhu? When is the proposed inauguration? 3rd April. Huh? 23rd April. 23rd April, the deities, and there will be other deities also who will join Jagannath, Baldev, Subhadra. And all of you will have the fortune of worshipping the lordships in their new abode. So the temple is a place where we go to rejuvenate our desires to serve. That's what happens. The desire arises within the heart. But the glance of those deities. That's why Srila Prabhupada right at the very beginning of his con installed deities. The devotees were hardly two years, three years in the movement, but Prabhupada started installing. Many people were questioning, hey, how, why are you doing like this? Jagannath deities Prabhupada installed. The first deities he installed was Jagannath Baladev Subhadra in San Francisco. And to, when you have in your installation in April, it will be like three, four days, you know, festival or whatever. Nowadays, all DT installations are very elaborate affairs. The first installation, Prabhupada just gave candle in everybody's hand and told them. They said, what to do with the candle? Prabhupada said, show, the, show in circles. So one hippie asked, how long? <laughs> Prabhupada said, till you become tired. <laughs> so that was the installation. No Brahman initiation or this or that. And Prabhupada was the only one doing everything. Right? And then next day after installation, Prabhupada came and saw Jagannath deities were missing from the altar. <laughs> Prabhupada said, Where is Jagannath? They said, We have taken him to the beach. <laughs> to the beach? Why? Prabhupada. Prabhupada, you only said, Whatever you like, you should offer to the deities. We thought, We love going to the beach. Lord must be feeling bored sitting there. <laughs> so Prabhupada started Rathyatra. That this is the way to actually serve the lordships. And then in Australia, Prabhupada installed the deities and he was asking who will serve. The senior most person was only two, three months old. Prabhupada prayed to the deities, my dear Lord, you take care of yourself. <laughs> and you take care of them. But he had faith that the worship of the deities would transform them. In New Zealand, 
the devotees were very creative they had a small temple altar only one set of deities could come gornitai but they wanted to keep jagannath baldev subhadra also so one of them came with the idea we will make revolving altar so they put a motor and with the button the altar would move so they had gornitai in front they had jagannath baldev subhadra back to back so you could have alternate darshan so when prabhupad came he offered obeisances to gornitai when he got up he saw jagannath baldev subhadra <laughs> he got bewildered he said what is this deities are rolling stone they said no we thought you know this can be done like this like that prabhupa said no there is a limit to your creativity <laughs> you can't just do whatever you want so therefore in contact with the deities in the temple there is a certain transformational effect which happens and therefore online is not sufficient post pandemic that's a big challenge online there is a certain limit the actual experience only flows in person okay and therefore krishna says to engage in determined devotional service one needs to come in the association and do avyabhicharini bhakti mam chayo avyabhicharena bhakti yoge na sevate sa gunan samati taitan brahma bhuyaya kalpate so that is the process of transcending the modes of vyabhicharini bhakti and so now lord chaitanya mahaprabhu comes to this age of kali to remove all kinds of restrictions on who is eligible to practice and who is eligible to teach bhakti and lord chaitanya mahaprabhu takes away any conception that this is based on birth sanyasi pandit goner korite garvanash neecha shudra dwara kore dharmera prakash lord chaitanya mahaprabhu empowered the last mile in society to practice and teach bhakti bhakta guna prakashite prabhu bhala jane nana bhangite guna prakashi nija labh mane and so lord chaitanya mahaprabhu empowered people like thakur haridas who was not even born in hindu family haridas dwara nama mahatmya prakash sanatan dwara bhakti siddhant bilas through thakur haridas lord chaitanya mahaprabhu revealed the glories of the holy name and through shila sanatan goswami lord chaitanya mahaprabhu revealed what is bhakti siddhant so therefore lord chaitanya mahaprabhu completely transform the narrative when he appeared and allowed this avyabhicharini bhakti to be practiced and to be taught by anyone who simply has the qualification of intensity in their sadhana consistency in their seva and sensitivity towards other sevaks the gita therefore underlines that action needs to be performed anybody who studies the gita will perform action anybody not exposed to the gita is also performing action 
how is study of the gita going to help me it will help you perfect your action like yesterday i was giving the example somebody wants to be singer dancer painter these are all skills you put your kids under experts in this field to refine their talent to grow their talent to perfect their talent in that field what is the gita the gita is the book which helps you perfect the skill of working yoga karmasu kaushalam so action or work is a skill just like bharatanatyam or classical music or like painting or art it's a skill which needs to be learned under experts and practiced with diligence and therefore when a person a sincere student of the gita applies the knowledge of gita in their life their action develops a totally different quality a perfect student of the gita develops action which is pure in intention high in inspiration full of integrity uses the best intelligence and has high intensity so action which has the right intention inspiration intelligence and integrity with intensity you unpack all of these things by applying the knowledge of gita in your lives that's the idea of studying and applying this bhagavad gita and so krishna really wants all of us to practice this a vyabhi charini which means to follow follow the message of the predecessor acharyas and follow with discipline and discipline is the fusion of intention with action so prabhupad was in bhuneshwar he told gaur govind maharaj how is the translation of shrimad bhagavatam into oriya happening and gaur govind maharaj said it's going very slow prabhupad said why slow because prela prabhupada i am also doing lot of management prabhupada said anyone can do management but well, you have to do management you should do translation and gorgo in mara said but there who who else is there here i am the president but i am also the only resident <laughs> so i have to do everything so prabhupada said no no we should find somebody translation is important so then there was a devotee who was just walking by an american devotee prabhupada said let us make him the manager here or govind maharaj said but prabhupada has come from new york just to visit because you are here to take your association he has no plans to stay here tomorrow his ticket is booked to go back to new york prabhupada said we will change his plans Gaur Govind Maharaj said, "Only you can do that." So they called this devotee. He offered obeisances to Prabhupada. Prabhupada smiled at him. He became nervous <laughs> because the Paramatma was revealing something is coming. He said, "Shila Prabhupada, any seva?" Prabhupada said, "Yes. I want you to stay back here." and manage this property this was like a thunderbolt this is prabhupad uh the climate in india does not suit me so i'm going to new york tomorrow prabhupad said only when you stay longer time it will suit you <laughs> so he started thinking next excuse 
Prabhupada, the food doesn't suit me. Prabhupada said, I will write down what you should eat, what you should not eat. Follow it, everything will be digested. That's my God. Then he started thinking more. And he said, Prabhupada, they have started a new department in New York only for me. I have to go and take it over. Prabhupada said, we will allot someone else. The department will go on. You stay here. Then this devotee was really thinking how to escape. He said, Prabhupada, I can't get along with the local GBC. Prabhupada said, today only I changed the GBC. <laughs> then he said, Prabhupada, morning till night, I'm so busy in work here. I don't get time to chant my 16 rounds properly. Prabhupada said, if you're busy all day, even if you don't chant 16 rounds properly, it's fine. So finally he realized, I have no choice. He said, Prabhupada, what should I do? So what should I do? He said, Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, I already told you, stay here and manage this place. So avyabhicharani bhakti is not easy. And so Prabhupada said, Krishna consciousness is simple, but not easy. The process is very simple. What do you chant? Hare Krishna. Every day you chant what? So there is no expectation that every day you chant a new mantra. You just chant. Hare Krishna. Every day. Follow principles. How many? Only four. Only four? <laughs> Only four. But they're following the four <laughs> will make you perspire. And then, you know, come in association, you know, do some seva. It's very simple. But doing it year after year, that is not easy. The repeated practice of the process in that association. Therefore, in the 15th chapter, the yoga of the Supreme Person this 15th chapter describes that how trapped within the modes of nature if the soul has to get out of this material world and go to the spiritual world what is the relationship between the material world and the spiritual world the material world is a reflection of the spiritual world and so Krishna gives the example of an inverted banyan tree. And then he explains that the soul has given up Krishna's association and the soul is enjoying in the material world. But even within the material world, for all the enjoyment which the soul desires, support is given by Krishna only. Ordhamolam Adhashakham Ashvatham Prahuravyayam Chandam se yasya paranani Yastam Vedasa Vedavit. So, this is the inverted banyan tree. And therefore, this tree is actually representing the mental dissatisfaction, the moral degradation, and the physical deterioration which happens within this world. And what are the three types of illusion or maya? Illusion in self-identification. The soul identifies with the body. Illusion in conception. And third is illusion in perception. Just like you put a stick in water, it appears to be bent. And therefore, this upside down tree is the disorienting material existence. Upside down refers to reflection. Reflection means origin is there somewhere. And so the river that reflects the desire of the conditioned soul and the regular tree is the spiritual world and the water which nourishes are the modes 
and the leaves are the Vedic hymns and the fruits of this tree is distress. Samsara Braksha Aghabi Jamananta Karma Shakha Yutam Managapatra Mananga Pushpam Aruhya Dukha Polinam Potitam Dayalo Lakshmi Narsinga Mamadehi Karavalambam so the nature of this tree is, as soon as you sow the seed of sin, what manifests is a tree, but that tree will give fruits. If you sow the seed of neem, the fruit which will come will be neem, and the taste of that neem fruit will be bitter. If you climb on that neem tree, and then from the lower branches you pluck a neem fruit and taste it. What will be the taste? Sweet or bitter? Bitter. Then you go up further. Pluck another fruit. What will be the taste? Then you are wondering why is it bitter? And then you come across someone who is selling books on how to climb the tree and taste sweet fruits in neem tree. So you see some, you know, people who are selling books on this and you attend classes on that. And there are a lot of people who are making business on how to find sweetness in the midst of bitterness. Is it possible? No. Because the seed itself is having the taste of bitterness, the whole tree will be filled with that bitterness. So therefore, that Agha Bija has to be replaced with Bhakti Lata Bija. And that's the idea that Krishna says that beyond this material world, if you want to go, what is the process? Nirmana Moha Jita Sangha Dosha Adhyatma Nitya Vinivritta Kama Dvandvair vimukta sukha dukha sangair gachantya mudha padam avyayam tat vinivritta kama. Again, forcibly, you have to become free from kama. It won't happen automatically. Vinivritta. And so when you go to the spiritual world, what is the spiritual world is described? Natad bhashayate suryo nashashanko na pavaka yadgatva na nivartante tadhamam paramam mama. That place which is self illuminated, effulgent with Krishna's spiritual potency. That is the spiritual world. But how do we go there to the spiritual world? Mamai vamsho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana mana shashthani indriyani prakriti sthani karshati The soul is shackled by the mind which gives the conceptions of enjoyment and the senses which create the deception of enjoyment. And so, the key to freedom is the mind and the senses trap you in matter, whereas Shastra and intelligence, they connect you with the spirit. So the spiritual world exists because it's the innate longing of the soul to attain a place which is the soul's original home and across different traditions, across different religions, all scriptures of all traditions and religions speak about a spiritual world, of a destination beyond. And therefore, the Lord explains that as the soul is in this journey, from the material world to the spiritual world, the soul experiences the support of the Lord at every moment. 
even when the soul is transmigrating in the process of transmigration the lord only provides the connection between one body to another body and then when the soul wants to enjoy so either the lord appears in the form of sunlight in the form of gravity and vegetation and in the form of digestion and so the lord supports and provides help in every possible way and therefore the universe is like a university when there is no pleasure get used to the misery the little pleasure keep looking till we start looking towards spiritual pleasure and if we get too much of material pleasure we will get caught in the superficial pleasure and never look for anything better and so all of these beautiful verses in the 15th chapter gama vishya cha bhutani dharayam mohojasa pushnami chaushadhi sarva somo bhutva rasatmaka so the lord appears outside he provides us support to stay on this planet to survive we need food so the lord through the moonshine gives rasa or juice within the vegetables that is because of the moon right so shila prabhupad during the moon landing episode in the late 1960s he made comments that if you are saying there is no life on the moon but the shastra is saying something else the moon is providing juice so how is it possible and so when prabhupad was giving lectures on the fifth canto often times he would say the sun is closer to the earth than the moon and people would get bewildered and some of them would ask swami ji how can you say that sun is far the no proper sun is closer as per the bhagavatam fifth canto and he said how is that and prabhupada said sunday come before monday <laughs> so prabhupada was the one who established the conception that in mayapur we will have the temple of vedic planetarium where the whole cosmology will be described right nobody has ever thought of this to show the relative position of the planets so i remember in you know 1992 when we were in iit and on the terrace we would do the japa so we were doing japa and one day one devotee who was our shiksha guru he came up and made one announcement that actually looks like man never went to the moon as per the uh, scripture and all of these things so he got really bewildered so one of the devotee got up and said hey how can you say like this this is not based on shastra so no i heard i have come from the temple i heard from there and there was a big debate which began between the two both of them were the senior people we were the younger guys so we didn't realize what's going on because at that point man going or not going to the moon was not our biggest problem in life <laughs> but there was one problem this guy who was arguing was our main cook <laughs> who was supposed to be going down and cooking the breakfast that was worrying us but he was really into that argument and it went on for half an hour already it was 6:30 so i nudged this arguing devotee who was my cook and said prabhu forget about those who went to the moon or not went but there are others on the earth who are hungry <laughs> can you do something about it no i am not going till this is resolved so that was the first day we had to go down and try our own cooking so the whole moon uh, episode prabhupad brings out in various places 
but very clearly defining that in the Gita, Krishna himself is saying, Pushnami Aushadhi Sarva Somo Bhutvarasatmaka. The moon is supplying that and Krishna is saying, I am the one who is providing that. And therefore, the nature of this world for the atheist provides evidence for inevitable distress. For the theist, it provides evidence for benevolent design. But for those who are practicing devotees, they see that the design itself has pain embedded so that ultimately one can look for alternatives in the spiritual world. If I put my finger in the fire, I know I must not put my finger here. The pain gives indication I must get out. And so Krishna says, this is the Uttama Purusha, the Supreme Lord who is waiting for the soul to come to him. Uttama Purusha Tvanya Paramatme Tyudahrita Yo Loka Trayamavishya that Uttama Purush is beyond Kshara and Akshara of this world. He is in the spiritual world. And one who understands this, that there is the Jiva, there is the Supreme Lord in the spiritual world, and then there are Jivas in the spiritual world. Then having understood the two categories of jivas along with the Supreme Lord in the spiritual world, one who understands all these three, Krishna says, such a person is really unbewildered. Yoma meva masam modho janati purushottamaha sasarva vet bhajati maam Sarva Bhavena Bharata, then he can actually worship the Lord with his full heart and soul. In this way, the Lord concludes the 15th chapter. Iti Guhyatamam Shastram, Idamuktam Mayanaga, Etat Buddha Buddhiman Syat. One who understands the material world, the spiritual world, the Lord in the spiritual world, the jivas in the spiritual world, the jivas in the material world, and how the Lord is constantly supporting the jiva, even in his journey of transmigration and even in his journey within this world in one body, the jiva will realize. At every moment, I am dependent on the Lord. One who realizes their dependence on the Lord every moment, that person is known as Buddhiman. Etat Buddha, Buddhiman Syat Kritakrityascha Bharata. So, now, having described this, then Krishna explains that, okay, there are those souls in the spiritual world, there are souls in the material world, but even within the material world, you can identify which are the souls who would want to make their journey to the spiritual world. They are known as Daivi Sampat. One who want to prolong their life and journey in different situations within the material world, they are known as Asuri Sampat. And especially they move in the direction of hellish conditions. So Daivi Sampat Krishna explains in the 16th chapter Abhayam Sattva Samshuddhir Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti Danam Damascha Yagyascha Swadhyaya Tapa Arjavam That Abhayam Fearlessness, satpasam shuddhi, increase in mode of goodness as a result of 
purification dhana yoga yavasthiti swadhyaya all this is part of daivi sampat and my dear arjuna you are endowed with daivi sampat so what are the characteristics of asuris those who are in asura gun reject non material reality they make material pleasure the life's primary goal they practice religion simply for the sake of prestige and they pursue money at all cost sa etham nirjita kaku ekarad vishayan priyan यथोपजोषम भुंजानो न तृप्यत जित इंद्रिय हिरण्य कशपू इज अ क्लासिक एग्जाम्पल हु एट एवरी मेटीरियल सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट टू एंजॉय इन द फोर्टीन प्लैनेटरी सिस्टम्स बट हिरण्य कशपू वॉज फिल्ड विथ फ्रस्ट्रेशन एंड डिसटिस्फैक्शन न अतृप्यत ajitendriya he was filled with dissatisfaction frustration and anger so one of the classic characteristics of those in asuri sampat is greed lust and anger trividham narakasyedam द्वारम नाशनमात्म काम क्रोधम तथा लोभम तस्मात्म त्यजे लस्ट ग्रीड एंड एंगर द थ्री गेट्स टू हेल दो जुअर आसुरा आसुरी संपत्ति दे हैव दिस आई वॉज गिविंग अ लेक्चर मेनी इयर्स गो इन यरवडा जेल इन पुणे Four or five hundred prisoners were sitting in front of me. This was in late nineties, and I like jail program because audience is guaranteed. <laughs> you don't need to advertise; they're all there. I gave the lecture, and I asked for questions. One prisoner raised his hand. I said, "Ask the question." He said, "I will come on the stage and ask the question." i turned to the assistant commissioner of police prisons said who is he why he want to come on the stage the assistant commissioner said he has committed 12 murder i said am i going to be 13th <laughs> why he wants to come on the stage just don't worry let him come he came on the stage and then he asked a very philosophical question about the holy name everybody in the audience started clapping there is a pandit amongst us also <laughs> then you know i gave some answer and then i talked to him later after the whole event was over i said you are so young you committed so many murders you didn't realize what you are getting into he said when i get blinded by anger is a blackout i can't see anything i can't understand anything and therefore i committed all these murders but by krishna's arrangement in the jail i have been given the task of translating books in braille language for the blind and the book i am translating now is bhagavad gita as it is by shila prabhupad so therefore these emotions are very powerful and krishna says one can overcome this asuri sampat i was giving a lecture at mit in boston there was a powerpoint presentation and there was somebody who was assisting me from the college and they could not make the lcd projector work after a few minutes of trying my lecture was about to begin i was looking at him hey what happened that student came up to me and whispered in my ear the lcd projector not working you depend on krishna and give your lecture 
I said, thanks for telling my own philosophy to me. And I couldn't say anything because the topic of my lecture was overcoming anger. <laughs> and the first slide was, things will not always work the way you expect. <laughs> so, Hiranyakashipu had control over the whole universe. But what is Bhagavatam revealing? Even if you control the whole universe, that is not sufficient condition for you to feel happy and satisfied. And Hiranyakashipu's greatest anger was what? Yastvaya mandabhagyokto madanyo jagadishwara kvasoyadisa sarvatra kasmats tambhena drishyade Pralad, you are so foolish and dull-headed. How do you call someone else a bigger controller than me? Madanyo Jagadishwara, can someone be more powerful than me? That shows how foolish you are. So that was his main problem. That Prahlad was accepting someone else greater than him. And therefore, the false ego cannot be killed inside the house the false ego cannot be killed outside the house. The false ego cannot be destroyed in the sky. The false ego cannot be destroyed on the earth. The false ego cannot be destroyed by any of the weapons. False ego cannot be destroyed by any of the 8.4 million species of life. The false ego cannot be destroyed by any efforts of human beings. The false ego can only be destroyed by the Lord Himself. Gurudev Kripa Bindu Diya Koroe Dase Trina Pekha Otihina. So, when you have a congestion in the nose, you take nose drops for nasal congestion. When your throat gets infected, you take some cough drops. When the ego gets congested, you need the ego drops. That is Kripa Bindu. Kripa Bindu is the pleasure of the devotees. The devotees sitting around you, when they are pleased with you, that pleasure within the devotee's heart pleases Krishna then Krishna frees you from the false ego and drops of humility percolate within the heart. And that's the whole idea. And Kaviraj Goswami says, Chota bada bhaktagan Vando sabar sri choran Sabe more koraha santosh Swarupa gosai ramata Rupa raghunata janayata Tai lekhi nahi mora dosh Kaviraj Goswami says, I seek the blessings of all the devotees, senior and the youngest. Chota bada bhaktagan vando sabar sri charan. I pray at the lotus feet of all the devotees, irrespective of their seniority. Sabe more karahasantosh. All should become pleased with me. Only then, by their blessings, I will be able to perform some seva and my heart can get transformed. Therefore, in our Bhaktivedanta hospital, they used to have in the operation theater one nursing dev photo. So, one patient was getting surgery. Before he was going, getting into anesthesia, he looked at the photo. Nursing dev ripping apart Hiranyakashipu. 
and the way the stomach was being torn apart he felt little fearful he asked the doctor doctor what is that photo doctor was a devotee he didn't lose chance to preach <laughs> he said oh that photo that is the first surgery in history <laughs> the doctor what was the result of the surgery <laughs> doctor said operation was successful patient was liberated <laughs> so therefore lord narsingadev appears to deliver hiranyakashipu of his pride and so prahlad maharaj prays evam janam nipatitam prabhava hi kupe kamabhi kam manuya prapatan prasangat krutva atmasa surarshina bhagavan grihita soham katham nu visrije tava bhritya seva my dear lord if i had not come in contact with shripad narad muni in the association of all the demons it was 100% guaranteed that i was going to hell it was only because of the vaishnava satsang that the trajectory of my life has changed and therefore although i have your darshan as the greatest privilege of my life which is the dream of the millions and millions of devotees to have darshan of the lord i don't aspire for your darshan as much as i aspire to serve shri pad narad muni towards whom i'm so grateful for bringing me on this path and therefore this is the son of hiranyakashipu prahlad who is demonstrating the perfection of daivi sampad yah shastra vid mitsrijya vartate kama karata nasa siddhim avapnoti na sukham na param gatim one who gives up the shastrik verdict and acts whimsically that is demoniac nature and now arjuna asks question that you say that one who does not have faith in shastra is demoniac but there are people that they have faith but that faith may not be necessarily based on scripture there is shraddha but it is not fully as per shastra so what is the gati of all these people faith is universal to do an activity to expect a result but when there is no guarantee of result we put faith so to understand faith and its levels based on the modes and what's demoniac austerity food sacrifice and charity and therefore reasonable faith is sensible and verifiable and in this way krishna explains to arjuna that under the influence of the modes there is food because food is adhyatmik how we sustain the body austerity is how we interact with the body charity is how we interact with society adi bhautik and sacrifice is how we interact with the demigods so he explains food in the three modes austerity in the three modes charity in the three modes sacrifice in the three modes and having explained all of this he says that when there is goodness the virtue is in control when one is in passion the vice is stronger than virtue and when one is in ignorance vice will dominate
difficult to you. In interpersonal relationship, when there is goodness, there is discussion. When there is passion, there is domination. And when there is ignorance, there is destruction. Anudvega karam vakyam satyam priyahitam chayat swadhyayabhyasanam chayvabang mayam tapa ucchate Words which are spoken, which are truthful, sweet, beneficial, these are all under the influence of mode of goodness. So, Krishna explains all of these beautiful points in the 17th chapter. And then he ends with conclusion that by Om Tat Sat indicates the supreme absolute truth. Any sacrifice, any charity, any austerity done without faith in the supreme is impermanent and is asat. Sadhunam samachittanam sutaram matkritatmanam darshanam no bhavet bandha pumsa akshnol sabituryatha this transformation from the lower modes to the higher modes happens in the satsanga of devotees. Just like darkness cannot stand in front of the sun, similarly the lower modes cannot stand in front of pure devotion. It gets dissipated. Pumsa akshnor savitur yatha. So Prabhupada detected that one of his disciples was distributing books and collecting a lot of Lakshmi, especially for the Vrindavan temple in the Southeast Asia region. He was becoming a little proud of the fact that I am doing more than others. Prabhupada detected that. And when we perform seva, seva is supposed to be in pure goodness. But then depending on how we do, we can get influenced by the modes. So this devotee really started thinking that I am someone special. The mode of passion had taken over. So in the middle of the night, Prabhupada sent his servant, woke up this devotee. The devotee woke up and he saw the time. It was 1.30 in the night. He says, what happened? He says, Prabhupada is calling you. He says, Prabhupada is calling you. So late at night, he got up, worried, came running to Prabhupada, offered obeisances. Prabhupada said, what were you doing? He said, Prabhupada, I was sleeping. Prabhupada said, why were you sleeping? He says, Prabhupada, it is night. Prabhupada said, it is night for me also. I am not sleeping. I am translating. Why were you sleeping? He says, Prabhupada, I was working hard all day. I was tired. Prabhupada said, I was also working all day. I was also tired. I am not sleeping. He says, Prabhupada, you are a Paramahamsa. Prabhupada said, why are you not a Paramahamsa? So he got bewildered. He thought something is wrong. He says, Prabhupada, what should I do? Prabhupada said, go back to sleep. <laughs> While going back, he started thinking. Prabhupada didn't say anything directly. But he was intelligent enough to figure out that maybe my attitude is not proper. And therefore, service is not as important as service attitude which should have gratitude tam sukharadhyam rijubhir ananya sharanai nribhir kritagya kono seveta duraradhyam asadubhi when there is gratitude then automatically practice of Krishna consciousness becomes simple so therefore, Om Tat Sat means we offer charity, we offer sacrifice in the mood of gratitude that yes, we are grateful to the Supreme Lord for all of this. So now chapter 18, conclusion, the perfection of 
renunciation. And Krishna explains in this particular chapter, don't give up action, but give up attachment. To act with detachment, understand the five factors of action. What are the five factors of action? The place of action, the performer, the senses, the endeavor, and the super soul. Daiva. And therefore, the various aspects of action are described in a series of verses. Knowledge in mode of goodness, passion and ignorance. Action in the mode of goodness, passion and ignorance. An actor. Mukta Sango Anaham Vadi. Dhriti Utsaha Samanvita. Actor in the mode of goodness, passion and ignorance. Intelligence is another factor of action in the mode of goodness, passion and ignorance ignorance. Determination in the mode of goodness, passion and ignorance. And happiness in the mode of goodness, passion and ignorance. So all of these are different aspects of action. And so this is very, very crucial to understand that all of these can be influenced by the modes of nature. And these have to be appropriately understood and practiced under the direction of a spiritual master and the satsanga of the Vaishnavas. Then only that transformation can happen. Because externally it will look very simple. The actual change will not happen. Prabhupada was on a morning walk and his servant was way behind. And then one dog started chasing this servant. The servant turned towards the dog and wanted to chase the dog away. The dog jumped upon him ferociously. The servant started running towards Prabhupada. It was on the beach. Said, Prabhupada, Prabhupada, save me. And Prabhupada turned around and he saw this scene that there is a dog which is running at full speed. In front of the dog is a servant with his dhoti flying. And he's in difficult situation. And he's crying out to Prabhupada to save him. So Prabhupada turned around and the, all the devotees were wondering how will he react? How will Prabhupada react? So Prabhupada crouched a little bit, kneeled a little bit on the ground took the stick above his head, looked the dog straight in the eye and with his stick above the head, Prabhupada shouted at the dog, Hut! American dog had never heard Desi Gali. <laughs> so, bewildered, the dog sat with tail underneath. The devotees were impressed. Prabhupada can control dog also. Three years later, the same servant was in Jaipur making roti for Prabhupada. From the window, a monkey entered. This devotee thought, oh, I know the technique. He took up the roti rolling pin, showed it to the monkey and said, Hut! The monkey took a big burthen and hit him. <laughs> he came running to Prabhupada. He said, Prabhupada, I followed the same thing, didn't work. Prabhupada said, you saw but did not learn. So sometimes when you look from a distance, it appears, oh, this is simple. I can do it. <laughs> no problem. But when the situation comes, you'll realize that I was not ready. So there's, oh, uh, intelligence in three modes, determination in three modes, okay. Three verses only, okay. Three verses will take 30 years to try to implement and experience and get transformed. So therefore, Gita is not just a book to read. It is a life manual to be applied at every moment in life. 
and therefore before beginning krishna says to arjuna nischayam shrinume tatra tyage bharata sattama tyago hi purusha vyagra trivida samprakirtita the 18th chapter is called perfection of renunciation perfection of renunciation so ultimately arjuna's renunciation is being tested because what is arjuna's original plan not to fight and the whole gita was spoken to change arjuna's plan so what is the perfection of renunciation to renounce our opinions to renounce our desires to renounce our plans to renounce our conceptions to renounce our previously held beliefs to renounce our convictions this is the most difficult that's why krishna speaks the entire gita to get arjuna to change all of this so when i joined the ashram so therefore the word used here is tyago hi purusha vyagra o oh arjun i i think you have the capacity to understand the lessons on renunciation because you are a tiger amongst men purusha vyagra tiger is brave right so therefore renunciation requires lot of courage so someone may think oh to give up you know clothes and this and that no 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 renunciation means the willingness to change the willingness to change requires lot of courage and therefore you are purusha vyagra you are tiger amongst men so strength does not mean lack of flexibility you can be strong and still flexible so when i joined the ashram i was sent to the kitchen so i was serving in the kitchen after a couple of months one more devotee joined he was also sent to the kitchen and they told me because i was like the you know only guy in the kitchen with a one or two other assistants so they told me you engage this guy this new person who has come so he was like a 6 and 1/2 foot tall strong so i thought he'll be good in making chapati and we didn't have chapati making atta machine you know so he was very good to hit all the atta together and make it strong and all that so i engaged him there after one week he came up to me and he said i am very disappointed i said what happened he said i am such a powerful speaker when i stand in my village and give lecture on sanatan dharma whole village stands up i joined this con to give lecture on sanatan dharma not to make chapati i said why you are telling me i am also making chapati only <laughs> you are in kitchen i am also in kitchen what is the point you and me talking go and complain to the in charge says no 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 if i go and complain he'll give me big lecture so after one week again he complained and again he complained and after a month he came and said i'm leaving i said where i'm going home he said why my talent is not being recognized i came to give lecture on sanatan dharma not to make chapati 10 years later i met him at a program he came running up to me and said after i left the ashram i got married after marriage my wife got back pain at home every day i am making chapati <laughs> so we may start off with some conceptions that i will do like this and then like this like this and like this and you are totally obsessed with that idea and then some other idea comes and you are not willing to listen to it you may miss an opportunity so not only is the message of the gita glorious the hearer of the gita arjuna is equally glorious because he was willing to change his plan 
So therefore, Krishna says, uh, Vyavasayatmika buddhi and satatam kirtyanto yatantascha drida vrata. So drida means you have to be determined. Determined means there needs to be some degree of stubbornness. Right? Because devotees are a little stubborn. No? Four regulative principles to practice in Kali Yuga, you need to be stubborn. No onion, no garlic, no chai, no coffee, no tambaku, no pan, no pan parag. You have to be stubborn. Whole world is going in one direction. You are wanting to go in another direction. Unless you are stubborn and say no, how can you practice? You can't say this, okay. Why <laughs> Isme Krishna hi hai. So that will not work. So to remain on track, you need to be stubborn. So you need to be stubborn to make sure that you are on the track. But once you are in the track, you have to be flexible. So you have to know that you have to be stubborn to make sure you don't go beyond the track. But that stubbornness should not become part of your DNA. That even with devotees, you are stubborn. Chai? No. Coffee? No. Aarti? No. <laughs> Why I got used to saying no to everything? So you have to be open. So that is the challenge. Therefore, to manage the society of devotees is one of the most challenging because you are dealing with a group of highly determined people who have made strong decisions in life and who are convinced these are the right decisions. So therefore, one has to remain flexible. And that's what was the glory of Arjuna. That people say, what does Gita say? Gita says work is worship. But work as worship means all work is not worship and worship involves activity distinct from work. When you, do, when you say work is worship, look at Krishna and me, my ability, my work, my result and the world. All these things are part of that ecosystem. So, how to have work as worship? Have exclusive time for worship. Internalize the spiritual vision of work and the worker. Work with diligence in doing our part and depend on let God do his part. Gracefully accept the results without emotional extremes. Cultivate prayerful remembrance before, during and after work. So Krishna says, Man mana bhava mad bhakto mad yaji maam namaskuru maamai vaishasi satyam te pratijani priyosine. And therefore, the integral vision is work animates worship, worship directs work, and spirituality permeates the entire life. Work with values to create things of value to realize what is of ultimate value. So now, after having spoken, Krishna ends with the 66 verse. Sarvadharman parityajya Mamekam Sharanam Braja Aham Twam Sarva Pape Bhyo Mokshaishyami Mashucha Give up all religion, all other duties. Focus on the duty of the soul. And then Krishna asks Arjuna, Arjun Kachit Agyana Sammoha Pranashtaste Dhananjay. Have you understood whatever I spoke? It is not ultimatum. Krishna is compassionately saying, if you have not understood, I am willing to repeat again. So, are you enriched with the wealth of wisdom to choose wisely? And in response, Arjuna says, Nashto moha smritir labdhva tvat prasatad mayachuta my illusion is lost. I have regained my memory. 
by your grace. Stitosmi gata sandeha, I am free from doubt. I will follow whatever you say. So therefore, in 68 and 69th verse, Krishna is telling Arjuna, share this message and knowledge with others. Then he says in 70th verse, study, take responsibility to understand. And 71st verse he says, hear and try to understand this. And then from 74th verse, Sanjay expresses his realizations. Ityaham vasudevasya parthasya cha mahatmana samvadam imam ashrausham adbhutam romaharshanam The Bhagavad Gita is not just a book of profound philosophy but a deep discussion between two caring people. Krishna, the philosopher of love and Arjuna, the connoisseur of love. And what does love mean? Love means providing guidance and respecting the other's independence. And Krishna walks with us, not just instead of us. And love is founded in freedom, but freedom is fulfilled in love. And so Sanjay is thrilled by Krishna's message and Krishna's form as he describes in the 76 and the 77 verse tatacha samsmritya samsmritya rupam matyat bhutam hare vismayo me mahan rajan hrishyami cha punah punah in this way i am feeling great ecstasy repeating this knowledge to you and so the gita has three conversations krishna and arjuna conversation dhritarashtra and sanjay conversation soul and super soul conversation Krishna spoke Arjuna, uh, Gita to Arjuna what was the effect on Arjuna Arjuna got transformed Sanjay repeated the Gita to Dhritarashtra what happened to Dhritarashtra so therefore we may all hear the Gita but the effect upon us will either be like Arjuna or like Dhritarashtra and the whole range in between. So when you walk out, don't think, now I am going out like Arjuna. <laughs> Krishna knows within the heart what is what. So therefore, Krishna is interested in the results within the heart, not that externally. Because in 2.47, Krishna emphasizes detachment, karmanya vadikaraste, and 7.1, attachment, maya sakta manapartha. So, therefore, Dhritarashtra has neither detachment from material goals nor attachment to Krishna. Therefore, he is not transformed. So, without that detachment and attachment, automatic transformation is not going to happen. So Krishna is interested who we become for him, not what we do for him. And so the last verse of the Gita, Krishna says, everyone together, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Partho Dhanurdhara, Tatra Shri Vijayo Bhutir, Dhruva Neter Mater Mamaha. So, the Gita is a life guide that is with us for life. And the Gita study inspires us and tunes our inner world. So, there are three steps to hear Krishna's voice. Hear with intention, hear with attention, and hear with affection. Why both Krishna and Arjuna? Dhanurdhara? Partha, Krishna, Yogeshwara. Why Krishna, Arjuna both are described in 1878? Because Gita's purpose is not just to proclaim Krishna's position. It is also to transform the jiva's disposition. 
So Krishna is always with us, but we are rarely with him. Gita helps us to spend more time being conscious of Krishna. What does the Gandiva represent? Yatra partho dhanurdhara. What does Gandiva represent? Gandiva represents our enthusiasm, our determination and our vigor. So the Gita is assuring us we don't know what the future holds. We can know who holds the future. Gita guides us to hold on now and always to the one who holds the future. We may have to live with pain, but we don't have to live in pain. So the Gita expands our consciousness beyond confusion to conviction and determination. So Gita is Arjuna's journey from constricted consciousness to evolved consciousness. So we are grateful to Srila Prabhupada that he has given us the Bhagavad Gita as it is. It is not meant to be kept in your house as it is. You are meant to study it, apply it and experience it. And on the occasion of Gita Jayanti, all across the world of Iskon devotees go out and distribute books. So when you distribute the books, you are repaying to Srila Prabhupada with gratitude what he has done for us by giving us these books. It's an expression of gratitude. So I was in a local train, heavily crowded. I entered with a book bag. As soon as I entered, there were all these people who pushed me and I was against the wall and my hands would not move. From the shoulder, the bag was hanging, filled with Gitas. Suddenly, one man came right in front of me. He also could not move. And he looked at me and said, Hare Krishna wale kya? I said, who else is dressed like this? He said, Gita hai kya? I said, huh? Hey, Gita do. I said, you can see my hand cannot move. The Gita is in the bag. Put your hand, take it. He put his hand inside the bag, took the Gita. He said, how much? I said, 70 rupees. He took out 100 rupee note. My hand was still locked with two people on both sides. I said, you see my pocket? Put the 100 rupee note, take 30 rupee. He put the 100 rupee note, took the 30 rupee. Whole Gita transaction was done without me having to move anything. I realized that day I am not the doer. <laughs> I didn't go searching for him. He came and he took the Gita. So whoever is interested, Krishna will send. But you have to do your part of making an effort. So as your wonderful congregation and temple led by Narhari Chaitanya Prabhu and the team of devotees is preparing and planning to move into a brand new setup to expand the activities of Krishna consciousness, I congratulate all of you for your wonderful, enthusiastic devotional service. Remember that Kali Yuga is a difficult Yuga for practice of any kind of spirituality. But in the association of devotees, there is eternal hope. So always feel grateful to this Vaishnav Sangha, grateful to Srila Prabhupada and grateful to the Vaishnav Acharyas who have done a lot of tapasya, Thakur Bhakti Vinod took 11 years searching for one copy of Chaitanya Charita Amrita in Bengal, where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did his activities. The Chaitanya Charita Amrita was non-existent. He could not find a copy in the 1840s. With great austerity, he found that one copy. And then he published the Chaitanya Charitamrita and then 
so many acharyas have done so much of austerity and so many disciples of Srila Prabhupada have braved difficult circumstances, have tolerated so many confusions in the society, have gone through so many conflicting situations so that ultimately all of us could get Krishna consciousness. So we are extremely grateful to all of them for their devotional service, for their sacrifice, for sharing Krishna consciousness with all of us. And I thank all of you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. So we will, since it's an Ekadashi, we'll do some Kirtan also for a few minutes.